hi there i'm back and i'm back with more problems based on ratio test or d'alembert's ratio test if you are good with the conditions of the ratio test which we discussed in the last video you can proceed if not pause the video now and watch the last video where we discuss the conditions of the ratio test so let's move ahead with the first question so it's like test for convergence i think you can see a weird expression here a really 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 long expression and i guess you can see the continued products continued product in the sense all these things will come here and all these numbers are going to come here and all these numbers will be in the next term so the series keeps on becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and in the last video i told you ratio test is really good when we are not able to find the degree that is we will not be able to use limit comparison test and ratio test is really good if you have continued products or factorials and now this is one of the best examples for that so as always the first thing to do is let's give it a name let sigma un be the given series so let sigma un be the given series now i want you to look at the numerator you can see that it's like 1 into 2 and then it becomes 1 into 2 into 3 and then it's like 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 etc 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 so generally the numerator must be 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into dot 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 up to n and look at the denominator we have 1 into 3 over here the next one contains 1 into 3 into 5 1 into 3 into 5 into 7 clearly it contains odd numbers and I already told you the trick if you have 1 3 5 7 etc if you want you can use the formula for arithmetic progression or just look at the gap between the terms so I'll write 2 into n and then I test by putting n equal to 1 I get 2 but I want 1 so I hope you're okay with this now do you remember the condition in ratio test it's like limit n tends to infinity u n plus 1 the whole divided by u n now listen very carefully the third term contains all the terms from the second term. The fourth term contains all the terms which was in the third term. That means when you write the n plus first term, you will be forced to write all these things. Let us have a look. So this is our un. You can I'll change the color for you so that it's good. So can you see this part? Okay. That is nothing but UN. Okay, now what I did is I changed the last term into N plus 1. And I did the same here. But please be very careful. 2N minus 1. I'll put a circle over here. And then I'll change it into n plus 1. So I end up with, okay, I hope you're okay with un and un plus 1. Now that's it. What's the final step? Do you still remember? Yeah, the limit. So we're going to find limit un plus 1 by un. We have our un over here. And un plus 1 over here. So just go ahead, substitute, and we have a lot of things to.
cancel whole thing will get cancelled the same thing happens here so the remaining quantities are n plus 1 and 2 n plus 1 and I am 100% sure if you are watching the last few videos you know what to do when n tends to infinity so tell me what will you do when n tends to infinity yeah try to create 1 by n so look at the numerator we have n plus 1 so I took n outside so inside the bracket I will be left with 1 plus 1 by n then cancel and one more question when n tends to infinity what will be the value of 1 by n yeah tends to 0 what about 1 by n square 1 by n cube all these values will tend to 0 we have cancelled n and then now this will vanish so will this quantity so you'll be left with 1 by 2 okay if you are good with the conditions of ratio test you'll be able to decide whether the given series is convergent or divergent right now do you remember the condition okay so tell me is 1 by 2 less than 1 or greater than 1 of course less than 1 and if the limit value is less than 1, what was the conclusion? Exactly. Sigma un is convergent. I hope you are working out the problems along with me. Watching the video is good. But as a student, the best thing to do is take a paper and pen and work out the problems along with me okay so let's move on to the second question the question goes like this test for convergence 1 plus 1 into 3 by 3 factorial 1 into 3 into 5 by 5 factorial etc 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 so in the numerator I'm sure you're able to see continued products and in the denominator you see factorials a special case of continued product like I said before Do Alembert's ratio test might help us so tell me how do you start a test for convergence or divergence what's the first thing to do so the first thing to do is we have to give it a name let Sigma un as always let Sigma un be the given series and the next thing to do is we have to extract the general term we have to find the general term and I want you to try that step by yourself pause the video for a minute try to write UN and then join me okay anyway look at the numerator 1 into 3 and look at the next one 1 into 3 is here but the next term now take a look at the next one 1 into 3 into 5 is here and the next one so un will be equal to 1 into 3 into 5 into dot 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 okay let's go for the trick what's the trick yeah you find the gap between the terms and write the last one and anyway, we wrote the same thing in the last question so I'm going to write 2n minus 1 and whole divided by we have 3 factorial 5 factorial 7 factorial that means there will be 1 factorial here so again yeah, this one okay so next task how will you find un plus 1 it's very easy you copy the same thing first you copy the same thing first and then take a look at the last last 
quantity that is 2 n minus 1 so please be very careful 2 into n plus 1 minus 1 and that gives you okay I hope you're okay with this so now tell me what's the next thing to do yeah the limit so we're going to find the limit but before that I want you to be very good with factorials so take a look at this 5 factorial 5 factorial is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 and this part okay that is 4 factorial and look at another one 9 factorial 9 factorial is 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 into okay I want to stop here so I'll write 4 factorial but if I want I'll write 9 factorial as 9 into 8 into okay I want to stop here so I'll write 7 factorial so suppose you have n factorial if you want you can write n factor less n into n minus 1 okay I want to stop with the next one so I'll stop here okay the last one suppose we have 2 n plus 1 factorial so I'll write 2 n plus 1 can you tell me the number just before 2 n plus 1 yeah 2 n plus 1 minus 1 and that will be 2 n maybe I'll stop here if not I can keep on subtracting 1 1 1 1 till I reach 3 into 2 into 1 and one more last but very important thing suppose you have an expression like n factorial by n minus 2 factorial so both the expressions have factorial but remember you should always manipulate the bigger one in comparison n and n minus 2 while comparing n and n minus 2 it's very clear that n is the bigger quantity so I'm going to manipulate the numerator I'm going to write n n minus 1 n minus 2 factorial the whole divided by n minus 2 factorial so this is how we simplify factorials so let's move ahead so we have the limit our un is here un plus 1 is here so just substitute and you'll be able to cancel a lot of terms now I want you to focus so we have 2n minus 1 factorial and 2n plus 1 factorial so which one is the bigger one of course 2n plus 1 so remember you have to manipulate this quantity and 2n plus 1 factorial will be can you tell me the answer yeah 2n plus 1 and then you reduce 1 so you get 2n again reduce 1 2n minus 1 and I'm going to stop here because this is exactly the quantity which I see in the numerator are you good with this step okay so let's move ahead so see now you can cancel like I told you we are going to simplify now you're good with cancellation this 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 and what happens if you get 1 by infinity 0 and is 0 less than 1 or greater than 1 of course less than 1 and if it is less than 1, then what is our conclusion? Yeah. The given series is convergent. I hope now you got a very clear idea how to deal with problems or the general term containing continued products. Anyway, I am going to stop the video here. And... If you want us to make videos related to any particular topic in mathematics, then feel free 
email us at stmatthew.gmail.com and if you want PDFs related to any particular subjects just contact us through the same email anyway I'll be back with more videos and in the next video in convergence and divergence we'll be doing the higher ratio test so till then bye